Hey guys. So, let's talk about some props. You're gonna have to excuse me if I stumble. This is my first stream. I'm a little bit nervous. Not very uh, comfortable in front of the camera. So let's get me off the camera. So they haven't really gone over props a whole lot. Um, I know a lot of people have been asking about gluing. That's something that I've been doing a lot of, as you can see, I'm making a bunch of uh, spaceships for props, space oblo game. Hello, me. <laughs> um, so anyway, there's some interesting things that I've found. Well, for instance, we'll start with hiding glue props. A couple different ways you can do it. First is multi edit, obviously, to get to it. And you can start by either using your mouse. Hi, I'm waving. Uh, okay, so anyway. Proper green. Okay. Hi. Aerosil. That's how you pronounce my name, Aerosil. So now everybody knows. Quit asking. Anyway, so, to the stream. Do you like those, Bob? I'll get to those later. Stop sidetracking me. Anyway, so, you have multiple options depending on your input. If you're using keyboard and mouse, you can select the objects one at a time. You can unselect them the exact same way. You can actually drag and get an area selection, which is kind of nice. And depending on which way you choose to do it, you'll actually get a couple of different effects. Let me know if that's better. Aerie does not have boobies. Aerie has an 11 year old boy's chest. Moving on. So, anyway. Depending on which way you. Jesus Christ. Depending on which way you select them, you'll get different effects. If you use the mouse, the first object you select actually becomes the center of your new assembly. Whoops. Nerves. Click first. So now it's rotating around that one. Oh, also, a lot of people don't know how to unglue. All you have to do is go into the item properties, and unglue is right there. So then for the other inputs, if you either use a controller and hold down right trigger, this little orb is actually your selection and you can see as you highlight things, that's the one you select. But if you hold down right trigger, you get the exact same orb that you get when you use the mouse and drag it. And you'll select all of them at once. And when you glue them that way, it actually takes the center of all of the objects instead of grabbing a single object. So it's kind of the same as if you grabbed that first one. But it works for anything. You don't have to have anything symmetrical. I was using these earlier, and I'll show you. I 
that's weird. Bob, you're rubbing off on me. Why am I getting these strange glitches? Or, maybe the patch has something to do with it. So my whole stream might be messed up. Well, before the patch, it grabbed the center. After the patch, now I don't know what it's doing. Let's try it with... Too much. Apparently now it's just grabbing the first prop that the selection highlights. So that's different behavior. Evidently they updated something in the patch. So never mind that. Another interesting thing that is still true. I'm not saying anything about your presentations, I'm just saying that you are prone to things that you are trying to explain not working out correctly. For some reason, maybe Spark is trying to uh, Spark is trying to show you up because your programming genius just pisses it off. Uh, the shapes. The shapes can be used for just about anything. For instance, I used these cubes here, and I don't have the pyramid. There's a pyramid in here. So I use these cubes, and that pyramid, and one sphere, and glued them together, and I made this, which is actually going to be for something that Silver's working on, just a power icon. So yeah, you can make all kinds of stuff, it really, you're only limited to your imagination. It's the same thing with any other kind of prop. You don't have to look at props as what they are, like for instance, shield. I use this shield a lot because it makes great armor plating. Just repeating it, changing the size, it looks like an armor. You see from my big boss that they showed, I use a ton of those shields. I use the ring. I use, this is actually a potion. Some kind of a poison potion or something. The thing next to it, that's actually a bell. So, basically when you're looking at the props, like for instance these are seeds. I made this entire spaceship out of seeds and a fire poker. You just have to look at the shapes. Don't focus on what they intended it to be. Focus on the shape. Like for instance, here we go. We got more shields. We got this potion again. We got a stone ball. Put together, it looks like a spaceship. So, I mean... I guess it, it's part of having an artistic mind, but just try not to get hung up too much on what the object is supposed to be. Like for instance, here's telescopes. You know, Bias used them a lot for pipes, I'm using them for pipes basically, engines. Uh, this, this is actually the speaker gizmo that is usually invisible and you use it for sounds, but I used it for an engine. Now, talk about brains a little bit. I made this little demonstration to show how brains work inside of glued objects. So I got these spheres. I mean, I got these rings. Every one of those rings has a brain in them. And they're all glued together into multiple tiers. Basically, I grabbed it. Well, I'll just show you. The main brain yaw slowly. That's all four of these brains. Now, if I unglue it, All these rings are separate. And each one of them has their own brain inside. And the thing about gluing brains, or gluing props that already have a brain, 
if you have a brain, for instance, this one. Turn slowly. Grabbing all the props. Put another brain in. Exactly the same. Just turn slowly. The brain inside the small ring is actually still there. Even though you can't see it anymore after you glue it, it's actually still there and it's still doing its thing. And then you, when you put a brain in the whole entire assembly, it will actually do both move commands. So when I go back in the level, it will actually be moving twice as fast. So that's something to keep in mind. You have to be very careful. If something already has a brain, for instance, these same potions here. When I first built this ship, I didn't I didn't think about it. Stuff is still interactive. If you don't remove the brain, it can, can total, it will totally destroy what you're working on. See, run into a spaceship and get poisoned. That makes no sense whatsoever. So it's very important when you first start things, remove the brains that you don't want to be there. Also, you got to make sure that you take the physics off of everything, because a lot of people are run into a glitch where when you try to glue things together and they both have physics that aren't fixed, things start shooting off the map. The physics, they don't like that. I'll show you one way that you can tell. Fire poker. If you look at an object with physics, or it doesn't want me to look at it. Where did my physics object go? Physics objects. Why is it not yellow? Right here. You gotta turn it off to fixed. Otherwise, bad stuff happens. I'll just put it that way. I got some notes here. Hold on a second. Oh, right, right, right. The other thing I wanted to show whenever you glue a new assembly, Kind of similar to how it grabs a new center depending on the first thing that you pick. It actually grabs directions based on how your objects are sitting in the map. So whenever you grab, uh, how can I show this? So anyway, I got this coin. I'll put it off at kind of a funky angle or something. So, when you first start off, forward is from the coin face out. As you can see, the green arrow always points to what the object's forward is. Now, if I were to glue that, anything. The new floor for that object is south. For whatever reason, it's always world south whenever you glue a new assembly. So you gotta keep that in mind too. Anytime you make an assembly, if you glue it south, for the full, what you want to be the forward, it's much easier to program later. And also, another thing to notice, where that's south, it always grabs a new up vector. Whatever 
orientation your objects are sitting whenever you glue them. World Up becomes the objects up as well. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. I don't know, you guys tell me if that makes sense. I'll give you a couple seconds because I can't see the chat. Yes, Brett, my stream is recording. It'll be up. Uh, it should be in my Twitch channel. It also, I'm going to put into my YouTube channel after I clean it up a little bit. So, you can watch it later. Oh, okay. Next thing. There is actually a big difference between gluing and attaching. The main difference is, whenever you glue an object, to something that's already moving. So by default, coins are moving, obviously. The brain says right here, yaw slowly, which is the same thing as turf. If I were to try to glue something to that, Unless they fixed it, because they may be spiting me once again. Unless they fixed it. You'll notice that the object, even though the orb and the coin are glued, the orb will not follow the coin because the coin had the brain previously. The orb has nothing. Now, if I were to take that out, no, no. Put it in the entire assembly. will move. Because it has to do with the way the brains stack. Now, this is where attachments and the gluing are different. Do the exact same thing, whereas if I was trying to glue it, well, let me give you some difference so you can tell the difference. So, the coin and the orb are rotating. The apple, use my own advice, take everything out, change the physics, always change the physics. Yeah, it was the patch, Bob. It was the patch. I believe it. You're making me lose my train of thought. Okay, right, right, right. Reiterate the point. The glue, the apple. Again, the apple will not follow it when I try to glue it. However, I 
He still has the brain. Still y'all. This has no brain. Attachments work totally different. Now, for starters, when you're attaching something, you want to attach start the attachment from the object you want to attach to the main piece. So you click the object you're trying to attach, and then you click to the object you're attaching to. Obviously, that make, hopefully that makes sense. If not, I can clarify. So, this works different to gluing, and I will show you how. Attach, even though it already has a brain, will make it follow anything you attach it to. No matter what you do, it will follow it. Only the thing that you click it to. It works just like the attachments in Character Studio, but you can attach it to anything. The only problem is, whereas characters have multiple points, when you attach something to a prop, it only uses the center point. So keep that in mind, but you can still do pretty fancy stuff with it. You can also fake it out a little bit by, for instance, if I wanted to attach something to a specific spot on this rotating whatever you want to call it I got going on here. You could put an invisible logic cube or something at exactly the point you want to attach it to and attach to that. That'll work. It'll look like it's attached to the main object. But yeah. Also, another thing to keep in mind. If I were to go and glue this attached prop. Well, first of all, let me show you. Whenever something's attached, you've got the chain showing what object is attached to what object by the direction the chain is moving. Now, if I were to take and glue this together, it actually deletes all attachments. So that's another thing you have to keep in mind. You want to do all of your gluing first, then come back and do attachments because it won't work otherwise. I will show you a perfect example. So Bob's boss here. It's actually made up of several pieces. Everything in the main part is actually glued into several steps. The lights and the coin, well, I'll show you. The coin I've got set to a hologram, so it just looks like a light. Same with the top one. No, nope. same with the top one. Okay. And I wanted the lights to rotate with the coin. And the coin already had the brain, and I did this before I realized that I could just delete the brain from the coin, attach it all together, and then put the brain back in that. But, just for the sake of argument, if you really do need attachments for something, which you can usually get around all attachments except for on the character, you have to do the attachments last. Because otherwise, it deletes it, like I said. So, all the lights are attached to the coin. The coin is actually attached to the main body of the prop. Another thing to keep in mind, like this boss in particular, is designed so that as it's for a shooter, as the character is shooting at the props attached to the boss, it'll be able to destroy the props individually. So for instance, the arms. These orbs here, these are going to be the targets. The arms on the rotating members inside. Once it takes enough damage, these rotating arms will blow off as well. To make that easier on yourself, you should do your gluing in stages. Just the rotating arm is its own piece. And then down from that, each individual arm 
is also its own piece. It makes it so when you want to go in and put brains on the individual pieces for the damage, you don't have to tear it apart every little bit. You just break it down as far as you need it to be broken down. It makes it much easier later. This is all one piece. These are all one piece. This is actually how you build complicated structures like this much, much faster. I only actually built one of these. And then I just rotated it. And I like to use a line to grid. It makes getting everything look right much easier if you're using symmetrical, but that's just me. To each their own. And as you can see, you can very quickly build some pretty complicated stuff. And that's really all there is to it. I actually did look at the shrinking bob, and it crashed me too. I'm not really sure if that's because I have too many brains stacked together. I don't know. I really don't know what. risk a crash here. Problem with this boss is, for some reason, you can't shrink it because it crashes you immediately. But that was before the patch. So we're gonna risk it. Nope, it crashed. So there's still something going on with that. And where the hell is my cursor? is extremely buggy. Very, very buggy. I've actually, I'm going way too fast here. I've almost exhausted everything that I had prepared. However, I would like to go back and touch on this again. I think I breeze past the shadow too fast. Actually, Moose, I had problems with shrinking props in general, like the giant crank. Where's the giant crank? The giant crank prop, and It's not in this. There was a steam generator prop also in Alpha. Shrinking them at all, once you got down to 7%, crash. Instant crash. So I don't know if maybe it's something in the shrinking, or I don't know what it is, but there's always been resizing problems. Actually, let me just start from scratch.
That's not okay, Moose. That's not okay. So anyway. Simple brain. Turn slowly. So on the small ring, I have turn slowly, which will make it turn clockwise. On the entire assembly, I'm going to put turn... Where is it? Verse. No, I gotta use yaw. Yaw inverse, which... Yaw is exactly the same thing as turn, so I'm not really... Not really sure. Yes, Moose, I've seen... I've seen that. There's shrinkage! Yes, I've seen that episode. So. If you remember, the small ring is actually supposed to be turning clockwise. The entire assembly is turning counterclockwise. The small ring is actually doing both movements at once, which cancel each other out, so it appears like it's doing nothing. Also something to think about, I guess once we start getting into some of the advanced animations and stuff, everything's going to be done with movement, so... Get the animations correct, you're gonna have to know these things. Like, for instance, I'll take the invert back out. So now they're both supposed to be going clockwise. I didn't change the center ring at all. They're both going slowly, but since the center ring is getting two moves, it's actually going twice as fast. Yeah, you could make a gyroscope. All you'd have to do is change the direction it's spinning. It's pretty easy. And I would do it. Just for you, Moose. Because you're my pal. So, inside one is spinning clockwise. Uh, should I do it in layers or should I... Well, I won't do it in layers. Slowly. Even though I'm gluing them together, every single one has a separate brain in it telling it to move a different direction. Whenever you glue things, it doesn't automatically lock them into position. As you will see. All it does, I guess, I don't know if it takes the root vector or the center vector or what it's doing, but all it does, it forces them to remain I guess equidistant to where they were. Wow. That looks odd.
So evidently, pitch on these guys is going from their root vector, which is the very bottom. Okay, so these rings evidently act very strange. They're connected from their root vector, which is very odd. miss my snap to grid shortcut on my controller, which they removed for some reason in beta, and I don't understand it. Well, that's another thing with props. Controller is amazing for moving stuff around quickly. Absolutely amazing. The further out you zoom, the faster you can move the object. However, it moves really damn fast. They changed that a little bit from alpha to beta, you can now zoom in and move it slower, which is very nice. You still can't get that fine of control on it. If you have the option of having a keyboard using these little arrows, it's so much nicer. You can practically get pixel-perfect control over these things. So that's awesome. Just a little tidbit to keep in mind. Hold down on D-pad? Oh, Bob, you are my savior! Didn't it used to be clicking down on the thumbstick or something amazing? Because now it's in a random spot. I don't remember where it was before. Something easy that I now can't remember. There you have it. Moose, you have a gyroscope. Oh yeah, Daddy, you want to see the rest of the spaceships? So actually, most of these I just made just today when I was bored and waiting for my stream and thinking about stuff. This little guy here and this guy here. For some reason I thought it was thumbstick, Bob. I don't know. My memory is not that great sometimes. But yeah. Okay. I think I've actually exhausted everything that I had to talk about. That went a lot easier than I thought. So does anybody have any questions? Would you like me to make anything in particular? You need any advice or anything? Let me know in 20 seconds because of the delay. Desert. Yes, I do. Oh, speaking of that, maybe that's something I could do. While you guys are thinking of some questions, Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll save. Cause that jar is cool.
so. Character attachments. And he has no controls again. I thought I fixed that earlier. Anyway, the character studio has the attachments, and they work exactly like if you were to manually grab a rock and want to attach it to this guy, for instance. Grab it and attach it to him. The attachments in the character studio, in essence, they're no different than this at all. The only thing they're doing is they're giving you a shortcut. Come on. Lag. What is happening? Okay, that was weird. Nope. Project Spark is having issues. Okay. That looks weird. Anyway, okay, so, sorry. Computer malfunction. Character Studio, all it's doing is giving you a shortcut for this step here. Instead of having to scroll around your guy, and you can see it kind of locks in, I think they've shown this in streams before, where it can lock into the different vectors. You got the head, you got the forearm, you got the upper arm, you got the center, and you got the root. For some reason, there's no upper leg. But it locks it in, instead of you having to do it manually, which can be confusing, especially when you get to a stage like this where you've got a ton of props on the screen. So that's actually a very good system. I'm a little disappointed in the legs, but I can live with the legs. It's a little disappointing with the feet, because it actually links them to the bottom of the foot. What is Project Spark? This is Project Spark. Project Spark is a game creation program, basically, in essence. Pretty much. Yeah. So anyway. Questions. Do you have any questions? Somebody have a question. Let me look back to this chat here. Attaching a bunch of props. Attaching props doesn't do anything to the damage modifiers. Um, from my experience, what it does is it just creates a new one that you'll have to set. Much in the same way it gets a brand new brain. You'll have to go in and edit the damage of the new prop assembly. Show the tornado. Okay. Well, speaking of the tornado, this guy is actually for that tornado level. I'm making a desert survival, so yeah. Another 10 spaceships. Bob, I'm going to make you 100 spaceships. Don't you worry, buddy. Just give me a little time. Update. 
Yes, knee. They also hold the character in place. That is an amazing point. It's so much easier when he just stands there and puts his arms out than when you're trying to grab him because they sit there in that stupid idle animation and you can't hardly do anything with it. Right. No more questions so far. Guys, come up with some questions. Seriously. In the meantime, I'll show you the tornado. This is another interesting prop blue. I guess. Actually, this is more attachments. Here's a... Ah, God. I can't show you... Or maybe I just can't remix it. Let me see if I can play it. I can play it. I cannot play it. Good lord. Okay, so, I'm sorry. Evidently, the server's being down. It's making it so that I cannot... Although it appears to be loading up. Am I connected to the server? not working right so I can't show you the tornado level for whatever reason um, oh I can show you another interesting thing attachments can be used for so much more than making artsy props here I'm using a I guess I could have glued it originally I was going to do something else with this, but the center is the only piece that actually moves. The outside are just sensors, and I used attached to link them onto there. So what it actually does, if you look at the grid, it's spaced out so that the center of this, uh, I guess it's an 8x8 on the grid will actually, I guess, sense the next square over on all sides. So the center cube at all times knows what is going on in any of the cubes that it can possibly touch. And I did that just by attaching them. And as it moves through the level, You notice the booleans on the right hand side there, those are actually inside the, the four around it. So when it starts moving, it uses those four as a sensor and it drags them along with it at all times. So you can do it for brainy stuff, it doesn't have to be art stuff. Uh, the, the pathfinding that Bob made me for my zombie game, it does much the original version of it did much the same thing. He had a bunch of acorns around the square and they were the sensors. The new version doesn't work that way. It's much easier, but brainy stuff. Brainy stuff can make beautiful stuff happen too. For instance, this random dungeon generator. It'd be great. Droid sees you can remix anything you'd like to remix. It's on the servers, that means you can remix it. I don't mind if you remix the tornado. Uh, it would be nice if I could show you how it worked, because it is math. A little bit of math. It's actually kind of tricky. I could probably just rebuild one. All I really did was I took a path, I tilted it up on its axis so that it was pointing straight in the air, and I changed the nodes so that it comes up in kind of a spiral. And then I create a bunch of little 
uh, leather balls, I believe, leather, little invisible leather balls that follow that path, and they create a smoke effect, the smoke trail effect, in fact, and the ball is spinning. The smoke trail effect has math on it that tells it the offset from that ball. So then as it's spinning and going up its path, it makes a tornado. That's really all there is to it. I would love to show it. It is very cool. It's working. It's now working. So here's the tornado. You gotta give it a second. I've still got it going in slow motion for debug purposes, but... And this big old fancy thing is literally three props. Well, three props on a path, I guess is more specific. So I got a path that is going vertically. And all that path does is rotate around itself. Wow, did I just do that? And then the little invisible balls. I actually made two because originally the ones that start at the bottom and go all the way to the top spread out a little bit too much so then the top looked hollow so then I made a second version that starts about halfway up and it kind of fills it in and then the smoke effect is actually just attached to the ball through a very simple little math equation right here And that's it. There's actually nothing to it. And then it just destroys itself once it gets to the top. Yeah, Camillo, all it is... It's called the smoke trail. No, nope, wrong button. smoke trail right here which unlike the smoke that just rises vertically the smoke trail will actually leave basically smoke particles behind whatever you have it attached to You guys don't have any more prop questions? Come on. Mike, did you try to manually go look for updates? Because that's what some of us had to do. Even though we had automatic updates, it wasn't actually grabbing it. So if you go in and look manually, that's how some of us got it. You might try. The tornado can move, I just have not made it move yet. I could probably make it move now. Although, I haven't decided how I'm going to do that. It's a little more complicated because it's actually moving on its... I mean, it's spinning vertically. So I'm not really sure... Well, I'll show you. I'm not sure how I would do that yet. I haven't really put much thought into it. So for some reason, these things do not have those parents. These things don't have it in appearance where you could just automatically say they're visible. But you can force it to be visible. So you can see the, you can kind of see in there 
that the path's cube is just spinning. And that's what's given it the spiral effect. Random direction would work. The problem is it's vector. It doesn't have a forward vector or anything I can use because it's always spinning. But I could trick it out and use the uh, the fancy brain layering that I showed you. And I could, for instance, make another prop. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. Might as well do that since we're here. Take that off. I can make... We are going to make a squirrel tornado. Or maybe a rabbit. Rabbit would be fun. Rabbit or squirrel? I can't use its up vector either because it's constantly spinning. So its up vector is always changing. I need something constant. Rabbit or squirrel? Oh, they use the same brain. So it doesn't matter. So let's see how this works. That did not work at all. What was I thinking? Attach, not glue. Attach. We have a jumping tornado. That's not going to do it all. There's... No. There. So I'm going to let this thing get going. No problem, Mike. I told you. I'm always here to help. <laughs> so the movement does make it look a little bit weird. I could probably figure something out to make it a little less weird. Yeah, that's not really working out so well at all. Yeah, that's why I'm standing away, Dalwin. I'm trying not to get it to run too much. I wanted to get the, the thing really going first, and now I'm going to test it. Which I, don't, I think this is going to break it due to the way the smoke effect works. Yeah, see, that's the problem. The smoke particles themselves are not actually attached to the prop. It's just the invisible effect prop. So I can chase this guy away. And everything's still moving, but the smoke trail's not moving right.
Oh, I'm dying. So yeah, this level. <laughs> this level is my dehydration and sun exposure level. So I can't really hang out too long or I'm going to die. So now it should just ignore me and randomly kind of wander. shows. Uh, I'm actually using Raycast straight up from the character's head, and I changed the sun direction so that it's pointing straight down. So if you, if you watch the yellow sun icon up there, as soon as I get into the shadows, and it's just due to a Raycast, but it, with the sun direction pointing perfectly down, you can tell what's right above you at all times. And the, the blue bar is actually your hydration, and the yellow bar is basically your heat exposure. And the higher your heat exposure, the faster you get dehydrated. And being out of the sun lets your heat exposure go back down, but your dehydration, or your hydration doesn't go back up. But getting in the water does both. And eventually I was going to make some cactus slices and stuff. You could go out and break cactuses. It's basically going to be a survival game where you're stranded. I haven't really decided why. You're stranded in the desert and you're trying to escape out. So you, you basically have to go from shadow to shadow and try to do it, everything in the shadows rather than be out in the sun. Because everything you do in the sun, besides walk, actually increases your heat faster. Like jumping, way faster. Attacking way faster. Everything you do is way faster. So it's, it's relatively realistic in that aspect. Are my models ready to down? Are you talking about the spaceships, Tron? Did they take my kidney too, Paradox? Squirrel NATO. I am totally going to make the tornado. Right now it's I forgot to, well let me do that while I'm thinking about it. For some reason, I forgot to take the collision off these damn things. And I'm going to do something at some point. I think I'm going to make a third prop. Well, I'm here. Let me make a third prop.
I'm just setting up. I'm trying to make it so that the player gets sucked into the tornado. Scaling to smoke up. It actually does, but it looks weird. Alright, so, whenever detect the player, push the player towards me. Whenever bump the player, damage the player. And I have it set to move up the vertical path of the tornado. So, this should be a template. It is a template. Alright, good night, Dowen. <laughs> I wasn't thinking, and I let it create too many invisible balls trying to suck the player into the tornado, and it infinitely created them, and it crashed. Nothing, nothing would change if the ball and the cube were invisible. I actually only made them visible so that I could see what was happening. Alright, big. See you later. Yeah, I actually, I made the UI on my Surface Pro, and then whenever I sent it over to my PC, which I'm playing on now, it's actually all skewed. All the bars were lined up, and everything was within that little frame, and now it looks kind of weird. I guess it has something to do with the screen resolution, but it's kind of disappointing that it doesn't automatically figure it out on its own. Come on, guys. 
How long am I? What time is it? Jesus. Okay. You guys got anything else? I've been streaming for a very long time. What needs to be the other way around? I guess that makes sense. You know, I don't really know. I was actually thinking about that the other day, like the old Diablo orbs and everything. And I'm not I'm not really sure. You want to see how much code it takes to do that? 55 lines for the character controls, the UI, and all of that system. 55 lines. Kind of ridiculous. Let me find the... Find the bars. Here we go. Okay. Let's see if we got any modifiers. Sign. There doesn't seem to be any sort of rotation. Uh, maybe... Yeah, maybe we could do it with vector math. I'm not entirely sure, because I hate math. But I don't know if you could do a screen location and then multiply that location by something that would turn it? I don't know. Maybe Bob could answer that. He's a lot better at math than I am. But as far as it looks now, you can't. There's nothing built in. So they're all horizontal. It would be nice. I kind of wanted one where I could build it like right up the side. What was, what was it? Um, what was that old game? Far East? No, not Far East Eden. That was a damn anime. I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, there was a game a long time ago. It was a little action RPG thing. And the bars were literally just like up the sides. So it kept everything out of the way. And it was really nice. I liked that. And I wanted to do something like that, but it doesn't appear that we can. However, ah, that doesn't help. Um, you can kind of fake it, probably. It would take an amazing amount of code, but you could probably fake it by just using. If you were to take these squares and just imagine placing them on the screen in sort of a vertical line, then if you used a, uh, I guess probably just a number variable with some comparators, and you could make it, say if you got 10 and your bar was 100, then it was every time it gets below 90, the top bar is no longer visible. Below 80, the next bar is no longer visible. And you could, like, cobble one together, but it would take a ton of lines. 
and I don't know if it would really be worth it at this point because they might actually just build it in later. So, I mean, that would be nice. That'd be actually, let me write that on my list. I've got a list of suggestions. While we're at it. Noted. So, do you guys have any other questions about props? Did anything not make sense? Did I miss anything? I think I got everything. Everything pertinent. you guys find this helpful? Give me a little feedback. Damn you, 20 second delay. then um, definitely shoot me a line over at projectspark.org I would love love for you guys to give me some ideas on other streams I do have a couple more ideas over here on my notebook but I definitely want to know what you guys want to know about I guess that concludes it for today. Um, like the little bar says, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. I'm going to upload this on YouTube once I get it edited. And definitely hit us up over at projectspark.org. We've got a great community. We definitely want the members. So take it easy, guys. <laughs>